Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about keywords. It has been over two years since I've created a video like this and obviously there have been changes to the YouTube algorithm. Tags aren't as important as they used to be and I just feel the need to recreate this video and actually longer story here. So back in February of 2021, I decided to do a test where I was testing out do tags really matter because like those videos were really popular at the time and I was adding tags to some videos. I was removing tags from other videos and I was changing the description and just like figuring out where keywords were most important, whether it was the title, description, tags, all of that stuff. And I decided to totally just scrap that video because I felt like it was out of date. I felt like everyone already knew that tags weren't as important as they used to be. And I don't know, I still feel like I need to have a video like this here on my channel. I need to have some sort of resource for you guys because keywords are so incredibly important. So if you have no idea what keywords are, like what I'm even talking about here, the basics to SEO, search engine optimization, I learned like Google SEO and all of that stuff before I ever tried to learn the YouTube algorithm and Google SEO is so much more complicated. Basically what it comes down to is keywords. When people go to Google, when people go to YouTube, they are searching certain keywords. And even when you're talking to, I've got like an Alexa behind me, even when you're talking to one of those, like you are speaking keywords and that is how like search results are populated by a bunch of different things, okay? But keywords are obviously one of those things. So if someone is searching for how to train your dog and you've got a video about how to train your dog but you don't have the right keywords there, your video may not be found on YouTube and I wanna help you fix that problem or just like better understand how to properly use keywords. The very first thing I need you to do is start thinking like your audience. Stop thinking like yourself, the expert in whatever you're creating videos on and start thinking like your audience. And this is going to just like make it all click for you or at least I hope this makes it all click for you. One of the things that I always think about with all the videos that I create is what is information I wish I had when I was getting started on YouTube. Like I try to think like the beginner that I was in the beginning because like all of us start from zero, you know? And one of my most successful videos on my channel I honestly think is one of the most successful videos because of my keywords and the way that I was thinking when I made that video. So how long it takes to get monetized on YouTube. Before I was ever monetized, actually when I was getting close to reaching the point of hitting 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours, I was just trying to get as much information as I could about the whole monetization process and how it worked. And one of the things that I typed into YouTube was how long does it take to get monetized? And there were no videos. Yes, there were videos that came up, but there were no videos that had that title. And I was like, why is no one creating this video? If this is something I'm searching for, I'm sure other people are searching for it as well. Then once I get monetized, I'm gonna create a video on that. That video ended up being one of my most successful videos because I was thinking like the consumer or the viewer, I guess you could say, of my videos. And I really want you to think like that. If you are an expert in dog training, I'm just like looking at my cute sleeping dog right now. So it's just top of mind, you know? If you're an expert in dog training, yeah, you may have these certain like phrases or things that experts say. I can't even think of any because I am not a dog training expert here. But you need to think more so like the beginner, like someone that does not know all the information that you know and what would they be searching? And it could be as basic as like how to train your dog to walk on a leash. Someone may be typing out that whole entire keyword and you wanna make sure that you have that keyword in the right places. And there's so much more that goes into it. So like, okay, one, I gave you guys really, really long tail phrases there. So long tail keywords, what that means is is it's got like several words. It's like a full phrase that people are searching. Now, people may also search some very basic, just like one word thing. Like it may just be dog training. It may not be as advanced as like how to teach my dog to sit. You know, it may not be as thought out as that, but long tail keywords are a little bit easier to rank for because they are more specific. I know I'm talking a lot about like how to content and I've gotten this comment before being like, this is great and awesome. Like obviously it's easier to rank and search for how to content compared to just entertaining content content or like lifestyle vlogs or anything like that. You know, obviously it's gonna be a little bit harder to rank and search and not necessarily like your audience may not be on YouTube searching for things that you would think you could create videos for. I will randomly search for new creators. Now I've got like my established few creators here on YouTube that I'm just like ride or die, absolutely love. But every now and then I will find someone new and it's because I will go to YouTube and I will type in something like, 
What's something I enjoy? Oh my gosh, house plants. So I wasn't specifically looking for like how to care for this one specific thing. I wanted like house plant tours and even something like that. It's not answering a question. It's a tour, like even like a home tour, a car tour. I don't even know. Like you could do like a pantry tour. There's so many different things that you could do there. You're not necessarily answering a question, but there's still keywords that you can include that you would want to rank for if someone is searching for that. And I'm hoping this is gonna make sense here in a second. I opened YouTube and right on my homepage here, I'm already seeing great examples of keywords, especially for non how to content. Okay. So the very first one, Tara Michelle, for one, she creates vlogs. Okay. I ended up finding her through a keyword search. I think specifically I was doing a little bit keyword research for a video and she popped up. I watched her video and then I ended up being promoted more videos from her about her home remodel that she was doing. And I'm obsessed with all home content. I'm just like obsessed with real estate. And homes in general. So I ended up following more of her videos or I watched more of her videos and I ended up subscribing and now I watch every single one. I'm freaking addicted right here within the title. Okay. She's got building new furniture plus the iPhone 13 pro unboxing. People will go to YouTube and they will search for those unboxings. People will go to YouTube and they will search for like building furniture. They will search for that entertaining content. Even if you are outside of the how to niche. Let me just think of like, what do we want to focus on here? Do we want to just like stick to the dog training example? I feel like let's do it. Okay. So in a search, I may type in something very specific, just dog training. Okay. And based off of what pops up here, these are other recommendations that people have searched for. And like right at the bottom, it says search prediction. So it's kind of just trying to guess what you are going to continue typing out. So if you are creating dog training videos, these suggestions help you to turn it into a long tail keyword. But if I just click on dog training here, okay. So this is using TubeBuddy. If you guys have never heard me talk about TubeBuddy before there's TubeBuddy and vidIQ. I got started with TubeBuddy like so incredibly long ago. And I just, I like them. I recommend them to you guys. So if you want to get started, there's a link included in the description bar down below. This is not sponsored, but I do enjoy TubeBuddy. Over here on the right hand side, it shows you some stats. So dog training, a very basic keyword here. The search volume is very high. Okay. Searches per month. It's 1.4 million. So if you are in the dog training industry, you've got people on YouTube that are searching for your content. The competition is poor, meaning it says poor. So like you don't like the competition is too high. Like it's not great for you to go after this keyword. Basically you can see these related searches down here. So this basically includes what was in like the drop down menu before. So let's say I want to try to get more of a specific keyword. What would I be searching for if I'm trying to train my dog? So how to teach a dog to, okay. So that's another good way to put it too. If there is something that you could like start a keyword phrase and you're just like kind of curious, like how does it end? Like, how do you think people are going to end this? So even if I was searching for myself, like does Catherine Manning or something, you know, like I could find other keywords that way, but how to teach a dog. And then it comes to all of these different keywords and you can create a new video on every single one of these keywords. Like this is a great way to come up with content and also to figure out your keywords. So the one that I specifically wanted to do was walk on a leash. That's what I was thinking of here. Let's see the stats on this. Okay. So the search volume is good. So it's not great. Meaning it doesn't have as many searches as probably the last one did. The competition is fair in my opinion, but it's so much better than being in the red. You don't want to be in the red because too many videos are, or too many people are creating videos on that. But overall they say this is good. And if we take a look the first video here, okay. How to teach your dog to walk on a leash how to teach your dog to walk on a leash. They took that exact keyword and they put it right in the title. They also put it right in the beginning, this description here. Do you see how to train your dog to walk on a leash without pooling? I'm gonna guide you through this video, get more dog training. So they even have more keywords there. And I think this guy is probably just like absolutely killing it. How many subscribers do we think this guy has? I'm gonna say at least, he's got at least 2 million. 3 million, okay, not bad. Good job, dude. You're absolutely killing it. That's awesome. Let's just think of something more so uh, out of the how to type of thing. So let's say moving vlogs. Okay, so we got moving vlogs, apartment, all of that stuff. We got Alicia Marie, hey girl, South Africa, Australia. Interesting. Okay, let's just search for moving vlogs and see what happens. Tara Michelle, number one, which is honestly not surprising that she's popping up, especially for me because I watch her content. So obviously she's going to appear for me. But search volume is great for moving vlogs. 
So if that's something that you're doing here soon, use the keyword moving vlogs. I'm going to share with you guys exactly where to put it here in a second. The search volume's good. The competition isn't really great, but you could still definitely create moving vlogs. And let's say that you wanted, this is exactly what I was thinking, NYC moving vlog. Do something very specific to where you are moving to. So let's say moving vlogs. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Let's see if there are any, yeah, I'm moving. Let's go apartment hunting in Birmingham. Who are these creators? I gotta follow these people. I don't know why I haven't done this before. I've actually gotten questions like how to find vloggers in your area. Do something like this. Like if you wanna find other YouTubers in your area that you could possibly become friends with, like met Cameron Monet, she's the greatest. You know, you can search like this. The search volume is pretty poor because this is very specific, but the competition is good. Not a lot of people are creating videos on this. Now, I will say when you are doing your keyword research, take a look at how many views, especially the top few videos have. So this video has 5.6. It's honestly probably a bit too specific, meaning like moving to Birmingham, Alabama. There's like, it's not LA or something, you know, it's not New York City. It's not one of those big cities that people honestly care about. But if we just did moving vlogs, what else do we got? Um, let's do like packing moving vlogs, okay? So this one has 55,000 views, 116,000 views, 220,000 views, like, and it just keeps going up. This one's 16,000 views. But if you notice that you're finding a lot of videos that only have like 100 views, then maybe that isn't the best keyword and you could find something a little bit better that you're going to get more people and more traffic to your videos. Now that you've found some keywords that you want to rank for, what do you do with those keywords? Basically, what I do is like whenever I'm doing my keyword research, I will add to my content calendar and my ideas list and I will be like, I specifically wanna rank for this keyword. What video can I create around this that's going to help me to rank for that keyword? And you wanna include those keywords. I know I'm saying that phrase a lot, but within your content and what you include within the video. Obviously, if you have a moving vlog, you wanna say, and I'm sure you're going to be saying within the video that you are moving. YouTube can figure out what is actually included within your content. And if you have ever, okay, this is a really great example. If you have ever gone to Google searching for something very specific, even today, I was searching for how to change the opacity within Procreate because I didn't know how to do that. And it popped up a video at this one specific spot. Like it shows you the exact spot that you need to watch the video for the one thing that I was looking for. Like YouTube knows exactly what you're including within your content, whether you do chapters or not, they know exactly what you're saying. So within your content, you want to be making sure sure that you are including your keywords and saying your keywords out loud. Also within the title of your video, obviously, like I showed you guys when I was doing my simple, just like searches on YouTube, take a look at the title of other videos and what they're doing within their title. What keywords are they including? And you want to make sure that you've got keywords within your title, within the description of your video, within the first part of the description, because it is going to appear in bold. Like even if, hold on, let me take a, just like a screenshot of this for you guys. You can see that Packing, pack, and move are bolded. Now, it's not really noticeable, but if you take a look, it will bold the keywords that you are searching for that actually appear within the description of the video, just proving that this video is, yes, relevant to what you are searching for. And then what else am I thinking of here? Oh, obviously your tags. Now, tags used to be really important, and I used to fill out all 500 characters, and I would go really crazy with my tags, but tags aren't as important as they used to be. So yes, include some keywords words there. Like I, within some videos, the ones that I really want to rank in search for, I will include some keywords. I typically around like only like five keywords now, like keyword phrases that I want to rank for. Let's take a look at the last video I uploaded so you guys can see how I use my keywords. And the very first place we're going to look at is the title. Okay. You have a hundred characters to include whatever you want within the title. And obviously your title should accurately describe what is included within the video. If it does not, you're not going to rank in search. And that's the thing, like YouTube can pull your keywords from what you're saying within your content and from your description, from your title, from your tags, and they can pull it all together and be like, wait, what's actually included in the content does not match the title, it does not match the description, and they're not going to rank you in search. So you need to make sure that it all matches up. So for my title here, I've got my YouTube video upload process. And the beginning part of my title, I write yes for the algorithm to include the right keywords, but also I write for my audience. I like to think that a lot of them are probably only going to read this beginning part, even if they read the title, like they may just be taking a look at the thumbnail and already clicking on the video or deciding that they don't want to watch the video. But video upload process, especially YouTube video upload, 
I mean, I guess like you could have like a couple different keywords kind of broken out there. So like video upload process, we got YouTube video upload. Those are keywords that I obviously want to rank for, but then more specifically, when we dive into the second half of the title, how to place ads on your YouTube videos. That's actually a keyword phrase that I think people would be searching for and writing it all out, including that whole entire phrase is nice because it's very specific, but also like someone might be typing in that exact thing. And if that exact thing matches my title, I am more likely to appear in search. Then we got YouTube settings. That's more of a short keyword. And again, and more that's like totally irrelevant. So that's kind of how I do my titles. I do definitely include a lot of different keyword phrases in my title. I think about what my audience is going to read compared to what the algorithm needs and what the algorithm is going to like there. Within the description of your video, you want to make sure that the beginning part is written in natural language and also includes your keyword words without keyword stuffing. One thing we haven't talked about yet is keyword stuffing. So if there are let's say 10 plus different keyword phrases that you want to rank for, you don't just want to include all of those keywords back to back to back. Like you don't want to just have a list of them. That's considered keyword stuffing and it's frowned upon by just like basically all platforms. Let me just go over mine. It says ever wonder how to properly upload a video to YouTube that properly upload a video to YouTube. I actually think I came up with that keyword based off of other videos that were ranking in search. So that's why I included that there. Where to place ads within a video, another keyword. The creator studio video settings to select, another keyword phrase. Adding an end screen, another keyword phrase. How to schedule a video on YouTube and more while I'm sharing my video upload process to help you with your next video. So the first three lines appear within YouTube, like within the description before someone has to click on see more. Within that section, you really wanna make sure that you're including your most important keywords written in natural language. Now, a couple of other ways that you can include your keywords within the description is this example right here. So within some of my videos, I don't do this for all of them, but if I think there are, well, for one, if there are videos that I mentioned within the video of like me talking here, I always say it's going to be included in the description bar down below. I want to make sure that I actually have it down there. But also if there are other videos that I think my audience is going to like related to the video that they just watched, I'm going to make a list here. So this has how to create a thumbnail, my video editing process. So like video editing process is relevant to this video specifically and what I'm talking about. But the other ones just kind of, it's sharing other relevant keywords that aren't necessarily actually what this video is about, but it hopefully like combines all of my content together and creates a web. So YouTube sees me as an expert, as an authority and what I'm creating videos on. If we scroll down a little bit timestamps. This is something that I mentioned in my last video. Again, I don't do this for all of my videos, but some of them I think it works really well for. And this is another way to include your keywords. And it just kind of like proves to YouTube what is included within your content. Obviously they can figure it out on their own, but just by saying like initial upload settings, like thumbnail, title, description, adding an end screen, like this just kind of validates everything that I'm saying up here and it validates my title as well. I'm hoping that you guys liked this just like very basic introduction to keywords, kind of a little bit of a walkthrough of what to do with your keywords once you come up with them. If you guys did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. If there are any other videos like just like some of the basics. I like creating videos like this. Like the last video was like my video uploading process. I like sharing some of these very basic things that like you absolutely need to know if you want to grow on YouTube. You know, I like sharing videos like this. So if there's anything specific you want to learn about, let me know in the comment section down below. But otherwise that is it. I will see you guys back here on Tuesday with another one. Bye guys.